Select Master 2, the target of interest, from the list of targets. Select Tube 4 and select Presets. Look at what your crew has already determined to be the correct presets. Accepting those, return to the Launch Control Panel and Flood Equalize and open the muzzle door for Tube 4. Click twice on the firing button, once to open the cover and once to launch the tube. Shift to the 3D display to see the torpedo being launched. There you see the ad cap coming out of Tube 4 from your ship. You can go to the list of entities and select the ad cap and watch it run. Shifting back to the fire control display, you see that there is a symbol for the weapon running and the number of the tube from which it was fired. This is the ship control screen where you will be able to change the ship's course. Come left to course 303, aye sir. Speed. All ahead two thirds, aye sir. Steady on course 303. And depth. Make my depth 38. Zero feet. Aye, sir. To make the submarine go deeper, the helmsman's hands moved the yoke forward and the planes went to the dive position. Notice that the trim angle went down. Now go shallow. Make my depth three zero zero feet. Aye, sir. The helmsman pulled the yoke toward him and both the stern planes and bow planes went to rise. Now the trim angle indicator shows that the ship has an up angle or up bubble. If you want to change course, speed, or depth at any time without going back to the ship control screen, you can use the maneuvering shortcuts by changing the digits in the readout area in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Maneuvering, con, make turns for four knots. Come right to course, zero, 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 aye sir. The icons on the right hand side of the screen are what allow you to shift to other screens and sensor displays at any time in the game. Steady on course, zero, zero, zero. The time scale will allow you to accelerate time to eight times normal time or to slow it back down to real time. In the message window on the lower portion of the screen, you will find a report history that can be scrolled up or down. Of course, you can use the pause button any time during the game to stop the action. It's time to deploy the tote array and get this mission going. Screen the port tote array. Aye, sir. Camera 1 is a fixed camera, and you can see the torpedo going into the distance. Camera 2 is the flyby camera, and you see repeated passes of the torpedo in and out of your field of view. Camera 4 is attached to the object and allows you to pan around the object. You can tilt up and down, looking above and below the torpedo. If your eyes are sharp, you will see the target in the distance. We see now that the torpedo is closing in on the target. That means you had a well-placed shot. Let's watch from the fixed camera as the torpedo overtakes the submarine. Con, sonar, torpedo bearing 041 has detonated. Con, sonar, explosion bearing 041. Good shooting! Now you can see how well you achieved the mission goals by going to the CO's stateroom and looking at the status display. At this point, you have the decision whether to continue or end the mission. You're not really interested in the tanker. Keep Con, looking for sonar. the victor. I have a new contact. Bearing 043. Designated Sierra 2. Con, sonar. I have a new contact. Bearing 316. Designated Sierra 3. These new towed array contacts may be of interest. The intelligence report said that the victor was to the north, so going deep below the lair is a good move. First, you have to resolve the bearing ambiguity. Changing course is the best way to resolve the bearing ambiguity of the towed array. Come left to course three, zero, zero, aye, sir. 
One of the contacts will have the same true bearing after the maneuver, and the other one won't. Steady on course. Three, zero, zero. Because the towed array is 1,500 feet long, and you're only traveling at four knots, it's going to take a long time for the towed array to stabilize. Even though you have changed the ship's heading, the towed array is still moving along in a northerly direction. That's why you don't see any change in the traces on the towed array display. You just now see the effect of the maneuver on the towed array. The contact on the right-hand side of the screen was the true contact. The contact on the left was the ambiguous contact. The sonar supervisor assigned the correct designation and decided that this was a threat contact, as indicated by the red symbol on the contact overlay. Select Master 2 from the list of contacts and see how good the solution is. Master 2 is held on two sensors, that's why there are lines of bearing in two different colors. As you start to get lines of bearing on the 180 course, they may initially not agree with the trial solution. But as the solution is updated, the dot stack improves until it's good enough to shoot on. This is the navigation screen. You can center own ship, and you can pan left and right or tilt up and down. If the cursor is in the screen area, the latitude and longitude and depth are printed out in the upper right hand corner. To see your current coordinates and depth of water where your ship is, just place the cursor on the own ship symbol. This is the radio and ESM screen. You will always come to this screen to see your tasking messages and any late intelligence updates that you may receive during the mission. Make my depth six zero feet. Aye, sir. Raise the ESM mast. Aye, sir. If the ESM antenna were raised above the water, you would be able to receive radio frequency and radar signals from potential threats. Once you get to periscope depth, which is about 60 feet, you can raise the radio antenna. Raise the antenna. Aye, sir. If there is any message traffic for you, you should see the receive light and then be able to read the new messages. Con, radio, new message traffic received. Don't forget to lower the antennas before you go fast and deep. Lower the ESM mast. Aye, sir. Lower the antenna. Aye, sir. The messages for the mission will remain available here in radio, and you can scroll up and down to read them. Go now to the Sound Speed Profile, or SSP, screen. In this mission, the thermal layer forms at about 220 feet. If you are above 220 feet, and an enemy submarine is below that depth, you may have trouble detecting it. There are five displays available. Active, Active Intercept, Demon, Broadband, and Narrowband. The waterfall screens on your left are so-called because the information cascades down from the top. The bright line at the center is a contact, to which your sonar supervisor has already assigned Tracker Alpha and which is designated as Sierra 1. Because it is being tracked, it will display on the navigation screen when the contact overlay is on. Notice Sierra 1. Go now to the TMA or Target Motion Analysis screen and select Sierra 1 from the list of contacts. You will see displayed on the left hand side the sonar lines of bearing for Sierra 1. Target Motion Analysis is a process of determining the course speed, and range of the contact. Your estimates will be displayed in the windows on the lower left side of the screen. You have a TMA assistant who can accurately estimate the target speed and use that information to derive estimates for range and course. Your crew has the ability to classify contacts. They'll determine whether contacts are neutral, hostile, or friendly, and they have been trained to only make verbal reports to you of the hostile contacts. They have determined that this contact is a tanker, a neutral contact. These lines of bearing show the tanker's change in bearing over time. The information gives a general idea of the contact's course, and in this case, it's moving from right to left, heading to the west. As useful as this information is, it's important that the TMA assistant also estimate the target's range, which is a critical piece of data you need in any situation. To do this, 
The TMA assistant uses the green ruler on the TMA board. Estimating the tanker's speed, he can line up the tick marks on the ruler with the displayed lines of bearing and derive a target solution. The dot stack in the upper left-hand corner indicates the accuracy of your solution. The dots should be in a straight line. 